Namaste. So let's talk about Shiva Purana, the Rudra Sanghita, Sati Khanda chapters 10 and 11. In these chapters, Brahma finally gets it right. <laughs> As we know from the previous chapters, Brahma was trying to trick Shiva into taking a wife. And of course, that's not going to work, you know? But he's typical person in the mode of passion. He tries to do everything himself and control everything. And he has such a big ego. He's always referring to himself as the Lord of the universe. <laughs> which is not actually true. Because even though he is the agent for creation, he is empowered by Shiva. And he's watched over by Vishnu, who is the actual substance of creation, the Mahatattva, the causal ocean. So... <laughs> Brahma really doesn't have much claim on the title of Lord of the Universe. Maybe, you know, Lord of the Mode of Passion, definitely. I mean, look at how sneaky and underhanded he is that he sends Kama and Rati, lust and attachment, huh, to trick Shiva. And of course, it fails. <laughs> Shiva is not so easy. But when he finally approaches Vishnu, Vishnu gives him some good advice. Vishnu says, well, just approach Shakti. Duh. You know? We already know that the only one who can bewilder Shiva is Shakti. The only one who can attract his mind, the only one who can get him into a marriage relationship. So why not just go to her? See, well, see, what's really happening behind the scenes is that Shiva is playing Brahma. He's setting him up to create a universe that propagates itself by sexual reproduction. And that's what we've got, right? Everybody is bewildered by Kama and Rati. Everybody is seduced by Vasanta, spring, the beauties of nature, isn't it? This is life in the material world. That's what makes the world go round, as they say. Love makes the world go round. Well, it also causes suffering. See, this is the thing. And suffering is the goad. This is why uh, Kamakshi, Ma Kamakshi in her form, um, of course, she's giving blessings and she's offering benedictions, but she's also holding a noose in one hand and an elephant goad in the other. She has four hands. So the noose means attachment. And the elephant goad means suffering, which is the impetus to perform sadhana. Without suffering, there would be no motivation to get out of the uh, bewilderment of the material energy. And actually, the material world is not a bad place. There's a lot of beauty here. 
I mean, just look at the way it's put together. It's so intelligent. I mean, it's so amazing. You know, just the fact, for example, that the moon and sun are the same apparent diameters. And when there's an eclipse of the sun, the moon exactly covers it. You know, this is a hint, people. This is like poetry expressed in cosmic creation. It's not a coincidence. Try to understand. There are no coincidences. But that the creation is full of synchronicity because it's an art form. It's a creation of Shiva and Shakti, the original artists. So, of course, it has its beautiful aspect. It also has its terrible aspect. For example, death. But this suffering is to motivate us, the living beings who are bewildered by Maya, to get out of it and seek self-realization. And then we can enjoy like Shiva and Shakti. See, the, the other series that's running in parallel with this, the Mundaka Upanishad, provides the antidote to the Maya of Kama and Vasanta and Rati and Brahma bewildering everybody <laughs> in detachment, performance of sadhana, self-realization. So anyway, Brahma is being used to set up this game, this drama in the material world where the living beings have to suffer and finally get to the point where they say, I don't want to suffer anymore. I'll do sadhana. I'll attain self-realization. I'll get enlightenment. I'll get out of here. Now, Brahma is not like Shiva, not like Shakti. They're unborn and they're undying. They exist eternally. Even Vishnu is born at the beginning of the material creation and exists until its end. But Brahma, well, just to put it in perspective, in the scope of the whole duration of the creation until the Mahapralaya at the end, there are a hundred Brahmas. So try to understand, a living being, a jiva, becomes Brahma at the end of every Mahakalpa, 100 ordinary kalpas. This is Brahma's life. And of course, to us, it's an incredibly long period of time, something like 500 million years or, or more. But to him, subjectively, it's like a duration of 100 years, like an ordinary being's life. It's just that time is different on his level in Brahma Loka. So then uh, what is the point? Why Brahma has to be temporary? Well, because he is bewildered by the mode of passion. <laughs> and we see this in this story. He behaves like a typical passionate rascal, trying to manipulate and trick others into doing what he wants or what he thinks he wants, right? But it's actually, he is being manipulated by Shiva, who understands his nature and sets up a situation where he knows how Brahma is going to respond. So finally, Brahma gets some sense. He gets a little humble after he fails again and again to influence Shiva. And he approaches Vishnu for advice. And Vishnu, Vishnu is like, silly boy. <laughs> Approach Shakti. Approach the goddess and pray for her to become Shiva's wife. 
Pray to her directly. This is a lesson for all of us. We are trying to solve the problems of life independently. Just like stupid Brahma, huh? we try to work and solve the problems of life, but all we do is create suffering for ourselves. Isn't it? We get entangled. We're trying to do one thing, and to do that we have to do five or ten other things on the way to it, and on the way we maybe we fail or we make some mistake and we get entangled and it becomes more complicated and you know this, this is human life on planet Earth. How to get beyond this? Well, we have to approach Vishnu. This is karma yoga. Actually, karma yoga means approaching Vishnu for advice. That's why we chant Vishnu's name, Vishnu Sahasranama, and so on. Then what does Vishnu say? Oh, approach Shakti for a blessing. Shakti can give any blessing. She can give any desire. That's what she tells Brahma. If I am appearing to you, Brahma, it means whatever your desire is, it will be satisfied. So speak up. Tell me what you want. And of course, he tells her, well, what I really want is for Shiva to marry you. And she goes, oh, OK. See, it's really easy. <laughs> we make it unnecessarily difficult by being in the mode of passion and acting independently. But when we approach the higher authorities with the proper humility, they respond. And they show us the answer. They give us the solution to our problems. See, this Purana is so wonderful because it shows us very graphically the solution to our problems in human life using Brahma as the fall guy, as the butt of the joke. Huh? Well, he's always the butt of the joke because he always falls down due to passion. I mean, he was the one who fell in love with his own daughter. Duh. You know, or fell in lust. <laughs> so Brahma gets to be the fall guy so that we learn hopefully, from his example, from his experience, and avoid some of these problems by just going directly to the solution, approaching Vishnu, getting our karma right, and then approaching Shakti with devotion. And then she'll make it possible for us to approach Shiva. See? And then once we approach Shiva, we easily attain perfect self-realization. This is the, the whole point. Not that this is just a, a historical document, the Shiva Purana. It's not just some history of the universe. Well, it is on one level, the literal level. But on the metaphorical level, it's very instructive. It's showing us how to manage our lives how to attain success in our existence. See, this is far beyond any kind of mundane yoga, you know? Like these stupid people who, who use yoga, you know, to, to just to tone their bodies and stuff like this. This is a waste of time. The real use of yoga goes far beyond that. The real purpose of yoga is to attain self-realization and solve the problems of life. Not perpetuate them by trying to independently solve the problems with our limited intelligence and energy. That's foolish. That's a waste of time. It just leads to further entanglement and further errors and mistakes. 
Instead, we should approach the higher authorities in the proper way, and they will grant the solution to all of our problems and give us the key to final enlightenment. Aung Tatsa. Aung Shakti Aung. Aung Namah Shivaya. <laughs>